In this video, I'm comparing Freya in God of War and in Norse mythology. And there are spoilers ahead in this video for God of War 2018, so there's your f***ing warning. And I'm saving the biggest surprise I learned about Freya at the end of this video, so stay tuned until the end. So Freya is one of my favorite characters introduced to the God of War series in God of War 2018. I love her backstory as the leader of the Vanyar tribe of gods, kicked out of Asgard by Odin. Her relationship with her son Balder, where she was just trying to protect him, but kinda at the same time, she screwed him over. But most of all, the fact that she is the rightful Valkyrie Queen, even over Sigrun, which means she is a complete badass warrior that we have not faced as of yet. But I noticed a thing or two. There are a few differences from Freya in God of War and Freya in Norse mythology. So let's figure out how close God of War mythology lines up with Norse mythology, concerning Freya of course. So we learn from Freya herself that she was one of the leaders of the Vanyar tribe of gods, which used to be at war with the Aesir gods, which is mainly made up of her, her brother Freyr, and her father Njord who were at war for years with the Aesir tribe of gods. You know, Odin, Thor, those assholes. Anyways, Mimir had a pretty good idea how to stop the war. Well, so he thought. And create peace throughout the realms. Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances, and not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won. But the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses. And for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore. But a rather senseless waste of precious life. Wouldn't you agree, brother? <sighs> Precisely. Enough was enough. And at last, Odin's most brilliant advisor became determined to find a more enlightened path. He set about to broker a peace between the gods. Took some convincing, but ultimately Odin was persuaded to marry his deadliest enemy, a certain Vanir goddess, legendary not only for her fertile beauty, but her genius at the very Vanir magic that Odin had long aspired to master. Freya married Odin? What was in it for her? It was a sacrifice to protect her people, a selfless act of love. Truly, she deserves better than she got. But of course, there's more to that story. As if the marriage wasn't punishment enough. Freya was better to him than he deserved. She stuck it out through all manner of indignity, all in the name of maintaining peace and safety for her people. But Odin's madness, his tyranny, his corruption of her magics, it became more than she could stomach, and at long last she broke it off. Odin's wrath was fierce, and his curses upon her were more than she dared to fear. But her magic was so much stronger than his. After so much time together, he knew her vulnerabilities and exploited them to craft curses she could never break. Oh, like not being able to leave Midgard. Worse still, he robbed her of her warrior spirit. Freya cannot fight, even to defend herself. No living thing may she harm by blade nor spell. In a world this belligerent, what choice does she have but isolation? Yeah, that didn't work out too well for Freya, now did it? So in Norse mythology, this is actually very similar. Only a couple of differences though. Let me explain. So after the Aesir and Vanir war, there was a peace agreement and hostages were swapped. They actually weren't quite hostages though, they were more like gods trading places. As in a few from the Aesir went to live with the Vanaheim tribe, and a few from the Vanaheim tribe went to live with the Aesir. To learn and teach and all this good thing. And Freya was one of these gods sent from the Vanir to the Aesir, along with once again, her brother Freyr and her father Nord. So who did the Aesir send to Vanaheim? Maybe I'll discuss that in another video, but we might know one of them. So Freya herself was given a task by Odin to receive the offerings from the people in Midgard, but this wasn't the only thing that she did. Freya was actually given a hall of her own, kind of like Valhalla, called Folkvanger, which is actually described a little better as a field and an actual hall, where she actually handpicks the warriors slain in battle to go to Folkvanger, and the rest of them go to Odin in Valhalla, or hell. And if you're interested in hearing more, I have a video all about that right here. So Freya having her own hall and picking the chosen slain actually leads her to be the queen of the Valkyries, because she is able to pick her own slain warriors and bring them to her own hall. 
But why was she given such a high honor by the Aesir if she isn't even an Aesir god? Possibly marriage. So in God of War, we actually learn from Amir that Freya married Odin to settle the peace between the Aesir and the Vanir and stop the war, at least for a little bit. But did she actually do this in mythology? Well, yes and no. So there are a few contradictions in Norse mythology about this. And when looking into the written sources of Norse mythology, just remember, take it all with a grain of salt. Because most of the sagas that we do have written down from Norse mythology were written down by people who were trying to demonize the mythology itself because it was a religion, just not their own. And they kind of depicted Freya as, for lack of better words, easy. They actually had Freya sleeping with multiple dwarves to actually get her necklace brings them in, and sleeping with many other gods, which kind of includes her brother Freya as well. Yikes. So just know everything that is written down about Norse mythology is isn't straight from ancient Germanic and Scandinavian people who practice this religion. Most things written down are from a very biased point of view. Anyways, in some sources, Freya is actually married to a mortal named Otter, which his name actually translates to divine madness, furious, etc. But does his name or description sound like anyone else that we know of? Yes, many believe that Otter is another name for Odin, which in mythology, he did go by a metric to the names and pseudonyms. Which leads me to my next comparison of God of War and Norse mythology. The difference between Freya and Frigg. So our boy Atreus actually thought Freya and Frigg were two completely different gods. But Mimir tells us in one of his boat stories that Freya and Frigg are one and the same. Frigg was actually kind of like a loving name Odin gave Freya, which actually translates to beloved. Ain't that cute? Well, not so cute because Odin didn't want a Vanyar god getting all the credit that Freya was doing. So when Freya did anything that was good for the Aesir, he used the name Frigg so it sounded like an Aesir god did it. What an asshole. So back to Norse mythology, there is a great debate between many scholars whether Freya and Frigg are the same deity at all. Frigg being the goddess of motherhood, marriage, and fertility, while also being the mother of Baldr. While Freya is the goddess of love, fertility, beauty, and uh, the hibbity dibbity. They do share a lot of similarities. So some scholars think that Frigg and Freya are the same deity, but just different versions of them. Freya, which her name actually translates to lady, can be a woman in her early years before marriage, and Frigg being the married and mother version, and others think they are completely separate altogether. What do you think? So Freya in God of War 2018 has a son with Odin named Baldr. Yeah, we kind of should all know this by now since Baldr was the main antagonist in God of War 2018, and she has no other offspring, at least that we know of. But in mythology, Freya does have more than that, which could transfer over to God of War and give us even more bosses, which I'm all all about. This is what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Freya in Norse mythology actually has two daughters, one by the name of Nos and one by the name of Drasemi. At least I hope I'm pronouncing that halfway correct. Both have been said to have inherited Freya's beauty and their father was Otter. Or it might have been Odin, but like I said, there's a ton of contradictions. And just assuming Frigg and Freya are the same deity, she might have another son by the name of Hod, which is known to be the blind god and plays a very significant role in the death of Baldr. Okay, he killed him with the help of Loki. Accidentally though, is Freya and Frigg the same god or completely separate? Will we see her daughters in God of War Ragnarok? Tell me in the comments down below and let's discuss it. And I really appreciate all of you coming to hang out with me today, giving up your valuable time just to watch my videos. If you really do like it, please leave a like, think about subscribing, and please share it out so more people can enjoy it too. My name is Shane Static, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.